Okay, so we are still in our modeling with exponential functions. I wanted to highlight this formula, general exponential growth of decay, which looks a whole lot like PERT from your compound uh, continuously compounded interest lesson. You might remember PERT, a equals p e the rt. Well, here is y equals a e the rt. So your a is your initial value, r is growth. Uh, if it's greater than zero and R is uh, decay if it's less than zero. So there may be a negative in this exponent. T is time. Now we're back to the general form. So time could be in hours, days, minutes. It depends what the problem says. Now, if you have a half-life problem, you can use the old formula. So I split the videos up, but the first video talks about the general form when you have a growth or decay factor. So if you have a half-life problem, you could put one half in there. But there's another way that you need to know about because this formula works really well uh, when you have a relative growth rate or decay, which means it's relative to the population. But I like to think of it, this is good because E, the growth factor, can happen a lot in nature a after a while the growth factor is going to level off at e, which is just like pi, it's an irrational number, e is 2.718, so the growth factor 2.718 repeating happens a lot in nature, so y equals a e to the rt. So if you wanted to use half-life, uh, wanted to use this problem for half-life, um, you would have to memorize something, a secondary uh, piece of information here. If H is your half-life period, the time it takes for half a substance to disappear, then R is going to be negative natural log of 2 divided by H. Okay. So, question, example 1. How much of 25 grams of PU234, it's just an element, remains after a day if its half-life is 4.98 hours. So I'll do it both ways. Okay, so half-life is 4.98 hours. That means your H is 4.98 hours. So R equals negative natural log of 2 divided by H, so 4.98. So we'll go and find our R. We're going to have to round a little bit, but I might try to use the storing capabilities of the calculator. Uh, let's see what happens. Yeah, so I'll round that to four decimal places. Negative 0 0.1392, but I've got that stored in there. So now I know R. Okay, so now if I use Y equals A E to the RT, how much of 25 grams? That means 25 is my initial value. E negative 0 0.1392. 9, 2, T, and then equals Y. So that's your formula. Notice that it's negative. R is negative. That means that it's decay, which makes sense because we're talking about a half-life problem. Okay, so how much? We're looking for the amount. What's the final amount after a day? So be very careful here. Your half-life was in hours, so that's we're back to having to write this down. T is in hours, and I'm trying to trick you here. What would T be if we're talking a day? Yeah, T would be 24 hours. So we will plug in 24. And we'll figure out what Y is. Okay, so... 25. This E button raised to this. Let's see if it works. I don't know if it will, but let's go see. Yep, this time it will paste. This horizontal fraction bar doesn't like when you do that times 24. So I'm not going to get a rounding error because instead of typing in negative 0.1392, I just went and got the unrounded R ver R put in there. And now I'll round. So Y equals 0.8855. And the units are grams. That's what. That's how much will be left after a day. All right. Let's compare answers. So let's say I did this one. 
the general formula, y equals initial value 25, growth factor half-life, so one-half, uh, t to the t divided by how long does it take uh, for us to use half a half of a half life 4.98 hours so if you use the general form not relative growth and decay form let's see what we get so we have 25 times 0.5 that same thing as one half to the and we want to know how much is after 24 hours so we'll put 24 in there. So we can find y. Okay, 24 divided by 4.98. Just comparing to see what we get. Oh, look what we get. 0.8855 grams. Okay, so you can pretty much use either method, although this one is good to know. In certain cases it will make a difference. Okay, example two. Carbon-14 has a half-life of 5,730 years. Some bone artifacts were found at the Lindemeyer site in northeastern Colorado and tested for their carbon-14 content. So we've got a little twist here. If 25% of the original carbon was still present, what's the probable age of the artifact? So we're looking for the time. All right, and let's use this. Y, which is the final amount, equals A, which is the initial amount, E to the RT. Remember, if it's a half-life problem, you can find R, negative ln of 2 divided by H. So R is negative ln of 2 divided by 5,730. And this is going to be a very, very small number. So we do want to use the storing capabilities if we want, if we can. So let's divide by 5,730 years. Okay, so you get that. So negative point zero 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 one two oh nine seven. That's R. All right, so now I can write this. Do we know our final amount? Do we know our initial amount? No, this is a tricky problem. It says if 25% of the original carbon-14 was left. So the relationship between the initial amount and the final amount is just like that in the compound interest video where I said if you don't know your beginning and ending amount, but it says how long will it take to double, you get to make up that value. So kind of the same thing here. We've got 25% left. Your final amount is 25% of this. So why don't we let A be 100? So if A is 100, that means 25% of it is left. So the final amount would be 25. E to this R value, negative point oh 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 one two oh nine seven t and the reason that works is still the same thing. That's why even though I've made three videos so far and I've got all these formulas, they really are really the same concept. So you always want to divide out the initial value. And that gives you your 0.25 equals e to the negative 0.00010297t. How do you solve for t? It's an exponent, so you have to take the natural log of both sides and use the power rule. I'm going to do that all at one step. Hopefully you will be fine with that. And then natural log of E is 1. So all we have to do is divide by that R value, which is in the calculator, unrounded. So T equals natural log of 0.25 divided by, let's go get that R, yeah, 11,460.01, and T is in years, so half-life was given to us in years. Okay, same element, continuing with carbon-14, an artifact was found and tested for its car carbon-14 content. 
This time it says if 85% of the original was still present. What was the probable age? So we're still looking for T. What do we do when we don't know the ending or the beginning? We can make stuff up. So let's let A be 100. That means that the final amount would be 85 if 85% 85 was left. E, we don't need to refigure R because it's the same element. It has the same half-life. So R is again going to be negative 0.00012097T. So we divide out the 100. Always divide out the initial value. Take the natural log of both sides. Use the power rule. So I just skipped a lot of steps there. Divide by R. And so T equals this time we have natural log of 0.85 divided by, and you can go up as high as you need to find your R. There's your R. This time you get T equals 1,343.49 years. Don't ever leave your unit off. Okay, so that's the general exponential decay, y equals a e the rt. Just remember, if it's half-life, r is equal to negative ln of 2 over h. What's going on there, that's the same thing as ln, if we make that a negative 1, of 2 to the negative 1 over h, which is r equals natural log of 1 half over h. So that's half-life and we're basically solving for R in general. Um, that's where that formula comes in, but you have to memorize if you're talking half-life with this formula, R is negative ln of 2 over H.